Hello. Um, today I'm going to continue uh, with my uh, series of alien videos. And um, so we're uh, with uh, Predators, the third installment in this uh, franchise. And um, yeah, there's a all star cast in this film. There's um, Adrian Brody, Topher Grace, uh, Ellis Bra uh, Braga, uh, uh, Walter, Walton Goggins, Lawrence Fishburne, Danny Trejo, and uh, Mahershala Ali. Um, excellent cast. Um, Robert Rodriguez uh, produced this film. Um, and, you know, this movie takes place on a, another planet uh, where uh, people are dropped down and are hunted by different predators and um, of course you know we see multiple predators in this film uh, but we also see how essentially they're hunting predators like most of them are all military or have some sort of military type experience to some extent you know um, Danny Trejo works for the cartel which isn't exactly a military uh, uh, thing, but in a way, they have their own sort of organized uh, 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 situations and stuff that they're uh, doing, uh, like they have a method of how things are done, like a structure, and uh, yeah. Um, Royce, played by Adrian Brody, um, is uh, the more mysterious of them all, and that you know, we know certain things like he was like in black ops and is like a military or like a mercenary, but you know, uh, uh, you know, he seems to be somebody who really wants to do his own thing, wants to get out of there, obviously, and um, just as things go on and everyone meets each other, they have to come together uh whereas in the previous movies they were all like in a unit they all basically knew each other in some way or had connections to each other whereas in this movie uh, they don't really have any connection other than they're all basically have done bad things you know um Wal walton goggins is um you know he's a prisoner he is a uh, it was uh, two days before he was two days away from uh, being executed because he's a murderer and also uh, a rapist by his own admission. And uh, it's it's a very uh, a darker film, you know, at this point in the franchise in, in various ways. Uh, there's a lot of familiarity with the original film in certain ways, but then there's also, of course, a lot of differences. Um, uh, this was a film when I, I was 16 when this came out, and it was really cool to watch. Um, it was definitely something that, uh, by that point, you know, I had seen the first two and enjoyed the first one a lot. Second was kind of eh. But this one I uh, I always enjoyed right off the bat. I just still like the first one the best. You know that will always be number one in my mind. This uh, though was very good. Um, I remember I ranked it second at the time though. You know going through all these again, you know I was like uh, I might uh, have to sort of change up that ranking a bit, but. This is definitely one of the, um, of the best uh, Predator films. Um, everybody involved did a great job. Um, Guatemala is uh, where the first Predators took place because, you know, it was like Central America. Um, and even the first one, it was sort of like, it could have made that assumption, but also it was like, I like, might have been close enough to South America where you could have said it was South America, but you know, uh, in this film, they actually say it because, um, uh, 
uh, Isabel, played by um, Ellis Brega, uh, uh, she uh, gives some information when they come across a predator later on that, you know, she knows of uh, what that is, even though she had never really seen one up close before, she knew of what that was, and so she's able to give some information and, you know, and of course, one by one, people get killed. And um, Nolan, played by uh, Lawrence Fishburne, had been there for quite some time and has been surviving and even has some of technology that the predators have and are able to, you know, he's able to be invisible and is like a, a, a mask and everything of the sort. And uh, has been doing what he can to survive and... Uh, Though he uh, does turn on them after giving some explanations about what uh, what specifically is going on, and he uh, wants their stuff. You know, he wants what they have, and uh, decides to smoke. Tries to uh, he sets a fire and uh, blows smoke where they are, and uh, it doesn't work, and he ends up you know dead. Um, but it's interesting for, I think, of the cast, um, Topher Grace, you know, uh, he's a doctor in this film, you know, like a physician, and he definitely does not fit. Everybody has some sort of, like, military-type experience or has killed in one way or another, and then he's, like, this physician, and it's like, okay, I mean, he's a doctor, so who knows? He, maybe a patient of his died and it was his fault or whatever, but... You know, and, and spoilers, if you haven't seen this film, or at least not in some time, you know, we find out he's a killer and has, you know, he's like, he likes it on this planet and doesn't want to leave and is, uh, basically wants to live amongst, uh, the predators and there's like a toxin that he, uh, has kept, I got like a, a little knife that he has um, where uh, he tells somebody not to touch a certain plant because there's a toxin where just a little bit would uh, be enough to like sedate you and you know enough of, uh, gets on you uh, you'll die but if you have a little bit it'll basically be in a certain like a psychosis sort of state uh, and uh, you know wouldn't really be able to do much because of being delirious and in a way that's kind of the inter most interesting I think part of all those characters like the, the guy who is at least assuming is the one who was uh, quite uh, quite possibly one of the worst people there because he's so unassuming and you know you're able to trust him um Uh, in the sense that he's not really a threat. He doesn't really fit in with everyone else. Um, and, and Topher Grace is a very good actor. Um, obviously, they're, he's best known for that 70s show. And um, uh, after leaving that, that show, he did his best to try and uh, do his own thing. Uh, Film-wise, he's one of the first big films he did uh, was uh, Spider-Man 3, which is seen as a misstep for him. Um, that film, people, you know, when they look at that, there's like various problems with that film. And uh, him as Venom just didn't work uh, for so many people. Um, and uh, yeah, and I might talk about those films at some point, but you know, I don't want to get into that. But Regardless of what one thinks of his uh, performance as Eddie Brock and Venom, uh, in this film he's quite good. Um, you know, Adrian Brody is also really good. Um, I mean, the whole cast is, but you know, Adrian Brody I think is a, a very good choice as the lead as Royce. He's just a, you know, he, 
don't always say he likes wants to be alone, likes like a loner, but also knows like, you know, the, the times where they do have to work as a team. So, you know, and in a way he's like the de facto leader to some extent because you know, he's the one who wants to figure out uh, why they're there. Uh, well, well, everyone wants to know like where they are and even why, like, you know, he's trying to figure out like, the doctor doesn't totally fit into this whole thing. All of them have all, you know, killed. And it's just, it's, he's trying to figure out where they are and, uh, uh, you know, what, uh, uh, where they can go to, uh, get out of, uh, uh, you know, get off the planet. And uh, we see the classic predator, as he's called, you know, which is how uh, Isabel is able to tell them about, um, you know, she recognized it from what she had heard and everything. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a very, uh, it's a very good film. Uh, uh, watching all these films again, like, back-to-back, -back, basically. Uh, you know, in a way, they're all individual films, and yet they always try to call back to the first one, at least. And um, also a big thing is, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger's not really able to... He's not in, like, the sequels. You know, they tried to have him in the second film, but money in uh, was a reason he didn't do it, but also Terminator 2 was being made, so he's going to do a sequel to one of those 80s films, you know, I guess he thought uh, Terminator 2 seemed to be a, you know, a better uh, option for him. <clears throat> of course, during Predators, he was, you know, uh, the governor of California, so, you know, he couldn't really, you know, what if he was to take a part, and they didn't write a part for, um, <clears throat> Uh, I remember where, for at the end, um, <clears throat> uh, they were thinking of having, like, him being on the planet, too, and would help the survivors, like, or at least it imply, like, you know, they're gonna, like, says to Royce, you know, good job, uh, you know, like, like, good work, and, uh, uh, basically assist uh, Royce and uh, Isabel as well as anyone else that's because at the end of the film the film is uh, you see people more people coming down like they did and parachutes and so uh, also somebody in the beginning dies because their parachute didn't open so that really sucks uh, for them uh, so, <clears throat> I don't know how exactly the ending would have been if Arnold was in the film. You know, if but I would assume, because it's been a while since I've heard uh, some of the things like they wanted Arnold for for these sequels, but obviously it didn't happen, but what the scenario would have been. And uh, he, uh, you know, scheduling, of course, with being the governor and all that stuff, as well as just the part itself, you know, maybe like if he's able to have some vacation time, and if he does a film, uh, if it's going to be Predators, like he probably might want it to be something that's very, uh, uh, suitable for Dutch, I guess in his way, in his mind, and wanting to make sure that the character definitely has a a real purpose and isn't there just to tease like you know if there's a sequel he, he will probably see him uh, um, but perhaps that also was like the I think, yeah it was just like yeah I, yeah I don't know it, it, it's interesting how they've tried to get Arnold back in the sequels and how and each one you know sometimes the story is, is sort of similar and how like <clears throat> what they write for him he's not 
totally sure on, like he wants to make sure he it's important, and other times it could be a money thing. Um, but, you know, Arnold is a huge presence in this entire franchise, even though he's only in the first film. You know, his character is still alive. Um, <clears throat> and make sure you know that, so... That's something, and, uh, yeah. All in all, this is a good film. I enjoy it. Uh, I do enjoy it more than the uh, second film, but, you know, upon rewatching the second film, it's fairly enjoyable. It's not better than the first. I do think the first Predator is still the best after seeing all these films again. Um, but they're all very... Uh, all very entertaining and all unique in their own ways and uh, I appreciate what the, everyone who involved is trying to do something different but also trying to keep the spirit of what made Predator good in the first place <clears throat> um, though sometimes it's like it's best to not try to go too far um, but sometimes uh, that can happen with franchises Try to do something different but familiar and but also sometimes it's either too different or maybe too familiar there needs to be a balance and sometimes that balance uh, might have been, might be thought of as being fine but in the end it might turn out to be very uh, uh, very bad um, but yeah I hope all of you are doing well, and I'm pretty sure this is it for today's video, because I don't really have anything else to say other than I enjoy it. Characters are good, and uh, the acting and everything involved is quite good. Uh, also, just something for, that I uh, remembered when watching this film. Derek Mears, who was Jason Voorhees in the Friday the 13th reboot, uh, the year prior to this film, uh, is the classic Predator. So I think that's kind of cool to, just to know. Uh, as a fan of both franchises, I think that's really cool. Um, yeah. Uh, and that's really it. Uh, just wanted to throw that out there while I happen to think about it. So yeah, hope all of you are doing well. Hope you're all having a great day and a great weekend and a great week. I'll see you all next time.